Uh, so this is Suburban Home at Home. My name is Justin or Fish. Uh, I'm here today with John Wright of No Means No, Hanson Brothers, and of course, Dead Bob, his new project. Uh, today we're going to talk. We're going to be talking mostly about Dead Bob, uh, about their newish album came out about a year ago. Uh, Getting to their new uh, their new tours. Um, and yeah, so yeah, Dead uh, Bob, Dead Bob, yeah. Well, uh, as you said, uh, it's new-ish. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I released. I, it was a. I just self-released it, and um, and really, when I was putting this together, uh, this would be. I guess it got released on April twenty-first of last mm -hmm. year. I know that because it's uh, Tom Holliston's birthday and my father's birthday. Uh, <laughs> And the Queen of England, although she's not with us anymore. Um, uh, so, yes, last April. And, um, uh, uh, you know, as you know, no means no. Uh, uh, I spent so many years playing uh, with my brother and with Tom and, and, and before him, Andy Kerr. Um, uh, but my brother, we kind of uh, packed it in around i think 2015 we pretty much decided i don't think we're going to get back at it okay. uh, it wasn't really a hard date it was you know we kind of were taking a hiatus and we did some handsome brothers stuff in 2014 and 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 we're inducted into the breakout west or the western canadian rock and roll um yeah museum <laughs> <laughs> yeah hell yeah uh uh, uh but we, you know, Robbie's health wasn't great. And he was kind of just, he had two young, he has two young kids. He started very late. Um, so he was pretty much done. So he just kind of, a, a long hiatus became a permanent one. And I ended up moving up the coast. Uh, had actually before the band broke up and living up in, uh, up, up the top of the end of the Sunshine Coast in London, the end of the road. And got involved with uh, some other stuff. Um, uh, uh, reacquainted with myself with my friend Colin McRae, and we got involved in a bunch of stuff up here, including a pub. And so my life was pretty much absorbed by this pub, uh, which unfortunately didn't succeed. I was trying to become a professional brewer. That's what the whole idea was to turn it into a brew pub. Uh, COVID came along, you know, and of course everything was utterly disrupted. And um, but uh, like a lot of people, COVID gave me a break from everything. Um, and suddenly I had time on my hands and, uh, uh, you know, and I had lots of old music. I mean, there was lots of music I wrote uh, for myself, uh, for the robots, the robot band compressor head, uh, which if you haven't heard that is a, a, just an awesome project. Um, and, and some old no means no stuff, songs that didn't go anywhere or I, we just didn't get to or what, what have you. Anyway, a huge backlog. Uh, so I just started to revisit all, all these demos and stuff that I've been working on and, and, and trying to finish some for my own. You know, I could set my drums up in my workshop, which I haven't had my drums where I live since like the 80s. So um, uh, so I just got busy and I started liking it's just all home done. I got I got my Mac computer with my Logic Pro on it, which I barely know how to use. But actually, I was doing everything on GarageBand because yeah. I sort of could figure that out. Awesome tool, GarageBand, yeah, I must yeah. say. Awesome tool. <laughs> Incredible. Um, and yeah, so I started finishing all these songs. And as the as the pub was sinking and 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 uh, I was just I don't know, I, I, I thought, OK, well, let's let's get something finished and I'll just self-release it. Uh, just for fun and uh and and that's what i did so there was no there was no plan on being dead bob quote unquote a band okay. and touring it was just uh i just kind of just did one thing after the other kind of like way no means no uh, started in the 70s it was just one thing after we'll write some songs we record some songs we play some shows there's no plan um and uh so i did so and and then that was the end of the pub. It closed, and I was like, "Okay, well, I guess let's let's make a band of this and let's play some music again." Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, sorry to hear about the pub, of course, but you know, yeah. the, the whole the whole thing, you know, it happens. That's big plans. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, so, Dead Bob, uh, is there a like a story behind that name, or was it just something that came to you one day? I, you know, uh, well, it didn't really come to me. It was a, it was, it was Andy and Rob and I. That uh, Dead Bob, that cartoon character, I drew and appeared on uh, our EP. You kill me. It was just called that because that's what's written on his T-shirt. In, in the cartoon, I think in 1984, but I think the cartoon was 1983. Uh, and we were doing, you know, it's like we were doing image images and we had several images, that being one of them. Uh, there's the smiling, happy guy hanging himself saying, you kill me, uh, which, of course, you kill me is, a, you know, when somebody, you know, busts you up makes you laugh like crazy you know it's like oh you kill me uh so it was kind of just a a a a, a, a an image that was uh, whatever uh, uh, what's the word not double meaning but it, it was very contradictory in, within itself uh and we were doing other images too this other artwork from back then but that one ended up on uh on the on the ep cover and then we ended up writing a song uh, uh, a very odd song, uh, I, I have to admit, but uh, uh, that uh, that came out on Sex Mad, uh, which would be which was our next release uh, when we when we first uh, when we released a full length album with Andy Kerr playing guitar, and it was released in Canada, Psyche Records, Psych Records, in um, in 1985. So, what does Dead Bob mean? Well, you look at it and you tell me what it means. <laughs> I like so that. It's an old, it was an old image, and and literally when I put up the record, I was my the old our our, our original uh, sound man Greg Bougie lives up here, and uh, he hadn't worked with us since I think he he left in in like two thousand and four, but he was our sound man for almost twenty years, close to. And I was like going through names, like what am I going to call myself? Blah 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 blah. And everything I thought of, it's like I look up on Spotify, and there's eight bands already called that. And there's a website you can go to that, you know, punch your name in here. No, that's taken. That's taken. It's like holy, fuck. everything I came up with was already taken. And it's like, ah. And he goes, why don't you just call yourself Dead Bob? And I'm like, mm -hmm. and so it was really kind of like a, all right, I'm just calling myself fucking dead bob <laughs> yeah fair enough <laughs> yeah I, I know that from experience with um you know having bands that you know we want to name ourselves a certain name or something and it's already freaking taken with a, yeah, yeah. a more pot like a and in new jersey or some something <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. You know, and in the end, in the end, I searched that out. There was nothing on Spotify, nothing on this website. And I thought, oh well, okay, I guess. It's... And then, of course, as soon as I did it, I found there is some band named Dead Bob in Russia or something. I went, ah, oh, fuck it, I don't care. They're yeah. at war. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, so, can you introduce the other members of Dead Bob? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, when I was finishing up this album, it's almost I do most everything on it. Um, it's like it was just like a DIY, my own DIY project. But I couldn't. I'm, I'm a very rudimentary guitar player. Yeah. So simple guitar playing is fine. But there was a few things that I just thought could be performed better. Um, and and the horns were digital. And, uh, you know, I wanted real horns. And, and stuff like that, just little bits and pieces. And, and there was one song, you know, I, my brother and I wrote a lot of songs together, but he was the major, the vast majority of the text. He wrote words to my music. That was off. That was the most common collaboration. Sometimes the music was a mix. Sometimes I wrote my own words. But generally speaking, I would write, bring songs and ideas into the band and he would find a voice for them. Uh, and he doesn't write anymore. And I've even asked him, like, hey, you want to do some writing? I'm like, no, he's he's not down. So, um, uh, so uh, I got involved with another fellow, Ford Peer, who was a very prolific writer. I, I, and a couple other people. I sent music to, hey, I got no words. Maybe you got some ideas. So I was reaching out earlier on as I was putting these things together. Um, uh, so in the end, there was a, a, a number of collaborators on this album on the credits you'll see them uh so one being i mentioned ford pier 
who I've played music with since he was a kid. Uh, he's at least 10 years younger than me. Uh, uh, over the years in bands, what the show business giants, which was Tom Holliston, who was no means no guitar player for many years, his band, uh, Ford, I played some on his own records. He's released a bunch of albums himself, uh, over the years. And both of us played on one DOA album, um, um, after tragically Ken Jensen died in 95, uh, DOA's drummer, uh, Ford, joined the had joined the band and i stepped in as a drummer for an album so i've got a long history with ford and he's a really good writer and quite a prolific one so i reached out to him for lyrics and he wrote the, the with me the co-wrote that song um um uh, that was too easy mm -hmm. uh and then byron slack do you know the band uh the uh, the invasives that rings a bell but yeah they've got i don't know six seven um they're, they're they're just an amazing band and i've mentioned this in lots of interviews that i have no idea why they didn't get really popular because they're just great super catchy riffy great live show uh for whatever reason they just i don't know 2003 i guess was not a good year to get started <laughs> i have no <laughs> idea Anyway, uh, but they played a lot of shows with us and with No Means No, a couple tours, Handsome Brothers. I got to know them all. And uh, it's the Slack Brothers, Byron and Adam and uh, Hans, the drummer. Uh, Adam, the, another Adam, I can't remember his last name, but um, they were awesome. And so I've uh, known Byron for a long time. So I was like, hey, you want to, we collaborated on, on, a, on a couple of songs. And, and the first song, Just Breathe, is actually a Byron Slack song uh, that I went and totally went, you know, producer on all over. Changed it, yeah. rearranged it, changed some words. I really kind of went at it. I felt, felt a little bad. Just, well, Byron, I've got to change your song. But uh, uh, he was he was totally fine. He And and so that one's a collaboration with him. Mm -hmm. And he partner who I only met through him back when I was getting this record together Christy Lee Audette uh, she's a horn player uh, as well as guitar player keyboard player multi very talented multi-instrumentalist she has her own band called Wrong mm -hmm. not to be confused with our album R-O-N-G Wrong uh, great band she writes and fronts that band um, uh, so she came up and helped uh, with a bit of background vocals and did some horns. Um, and, and I mentioned Colin McRae uh, er, earlier, uh, my partner. Well, he was in a band called Pigment Vehicle, which were out of Victoria as well, old school, uh, crazy, weird band, punk rock, but, uh, you know, yeah. kind of more rock, weird, uh, uh, really good. And he's a great bass player. Um, uh, so he lives here. Okay. You know, Ford, Byron, and Christy all live down in the Lower Mainland. Uh, so he lives here, and we're friends, so we could start. He wanted to play bass, so he's like, he hadn't picked up his bass for 25 years, and he said, I, I want to get back into music here. So so we got together. So was, that's the five of us, Ford, Byron, Christy, and Colin, and myself. And um, uh, there was, of course, Selena Martin did some singing on the first album, and she will she's also on an on, on a song for the next album but we haven't done anything live with each other okay uh so those are the members of the band and that's kind of how we got going as i said there was no real plan the record came out it's like okay well i thought hey you know you guys feel like you know being in a band <laughs> <laughs> and so and for like, <laughs> sorry for uh touring is it gonna be the same kind of lineup that's those it's all those five of us yeah okay awesome yeah uh i'm playing drums of course doing a lot of the lead singing yeah um, too much lead singing um uh calling on bass christy's on guitar singing uh playing trumpet a little bit of keyboard uh, byron's pretty much uh on the guitar and ford is manning all the keyboards and synthesizers Excellent. and play and play trombone so I've got in some songs we got trombone and trumpet, a little horn section, and that just <laughs> makes me happy because I I love horns and never had an opportunity really. Um, you know, no means no. Of course, they, they have 
appear musically occasionally on a few records, but we never did anything like that live. So, uh, it, yeah, I'm having great fun with that. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, for the uh, album or, or for any music for uh, for Dead Bob, what were your influences as a band and uh, as a musician personally? Uh, well, you know, we, I got, you know, I'm older than uh, everyone else, probably about 10 years older, maybe, um, older than that from Christy. I think she's the youngest in the band. So, you know, I, you know, we were born out of Victoria, uh, British Columbia with all the late seventies punk rock. Um, you know, I was in school, I graduated in 1980. So I was playing in the jazz band and I was listening, excuse me, um, uh, I was very much into big band, hence, you know, my mentioning how I like horns um, and listening to jazz and, and listening to pop rock, you know, like, you know, but it's good sing Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, just like every other 13 year old back in 75 or whatever it came out. Yeah. And uh, but my brother really got into the Ramones and really got into punk rock when it came out. And he had been away from home, but had moved back um, and brought himself and this music and uh, a TAC four track tape deck because he wanted to start recording himself. And, and, and then, so then that's when I was introduced to a lot of this music. Um, and, but it wasn't, a, it was like a night, it wasn't until 1979 and we went to see DOA and the dish rags uh, at the university of British uh, Uni Vic Victoria university where both of us worked actually. And it was just mind blowing. It was like, oh my God, like I just never seen anything like it. Kind of heard some from like, because I heard a bit of stuff like from my brother, and I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever, it's okay. But when I saw DOA, it was just like, holy crap, this is amazing. And um, never seen a drummer play that fast, never seen that kind of energy. It was just like, wow. Um, and that's really when I was hooked and, and my brother and I were starting to write more music together. And now I'm like, okay, let's, you know, let's start writing some, some new kind of music. So, uh, that's kind of how we got going. And so of course, a lot of the bands, the, the, the first punk rock bands, all the post punk rock bands, and, and I still like pop music. So I was, you know, I love Elvis Costello and XTC and, oh, uh, well, lots and lots of bands so those were all those early influences you know and even like the day glows and great you know metal punk and yeah. and, and and the neos the neos from victoria i swear to god are the first hardcore band ever i mean that speed crazy fast one minute songs i i don't know maybe there's probably other bands doing it but i never i don't know who they were would be this is like 1981 and they're crazy speed core uh totally influenced jello biafra actually when jello heard the neos he was wow that had changed him too um uh so yeah uh all these you know all these the victoria scene was vibrant like the neos were there was no other band like them the Daglos there was no other band like them no me snow there was no other band like us there was and, and red tide and oh my god i'm there's tons and i'm not getting anywhere near naming them all uh so this really variety of music in victoria in that early scene was great and you know um so influences yeah that's kind of where i came out of and nomi snow became much more active and um uh, so over the years you know whatever i would be listening to different stuff but uh always different and i and and I think the one thing to say about influences is always open to influences from all different styles of music. Um, and, and I like that. I like the variety of music. And I think that comes through in No Me Snow and comes through in Dead Bob and continue mm -hmm. to do so. The other folks were, you know, like I say, 10, 15 years be, be, uh, behind, be, uh, be behind me. Um, but they, you know, Ford was you know, into the Edmonton punk rock scene when he was 15 years old. That's when we met him, actually, uh, with No Means No. And uh, and he is also a prolific lighter, really varied stuff. Uh, Byron, too, is that his, his, his invasives. Check them out. You'll love them. And Ford, too. You, now you got your homework. You got to go listen to these, uh, listen to these bands. And um, 
So great deal of variety in writing uh, and everyone open to to whatever you know there's nobody like oh i just play this you know yeah. you know everyone's okay. totally cool on uh, on playing different things right now we're kind of the, the album is kind of my back catalog of uh, of songs that have i've accumulated over the years that i was finishing as i said i sort of, sort of got at it the next album again same it's mostly me uh mostly a bunch of these songs that i've gotten to and finished but now it's like yeah uh where does it go from here now now that we're actually a band we've only played nine shows uh so it's just we're just getting started and there's all these songwriters and all these personalities um, uh, that are going to bring as you say their influences and and uh yeah so we don't even know where that's going to go yet we'll see <laughs> yeah uh about those nine shows uh were those the ones all in british columbia yeah, that yeah, we, Columbia tour or whatever. Columbia tour, the big BC tour. Yeah, um, uh, which I might point out that uh, Music BC did not support us at all. Mm. <laughs> Bands get grants for some reason. Yeah, we don't. But um, that's my little jibe. I just like mentioning that because it's like it's so weird the whole way grants work. And but uh, I don't know why. But out of spite, I think I mentioned that. Although I'm, I'm sure they're all lovely people, but <laughs> anyway, um, that just my head, that popped in my head like. Um, anyway, yes, all BC shows and uh, uh, yeah, it was just testing ground. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, we knew, I knew, we all knew that the audience was going to be no means no fans. So those are the ones coming out that know who Dead Bob is, and uh, uh, so. You know, like I say, we'd never been a band together the, as us. And uh, uh, so we just wanted to, let's do some shows. Let's do three weekends. I think that's why we didn't get a grant. They didn't consider it a tour. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so we played nine shows over three weekends. And um, uh, yeah, it was kind of testing the water. And it all went really well. The, uh, the, the, the crowds were great. The, the, the little shows were expected to be little but packed and fun the big shows were big enough pretty much what i expected uh so and the reaction was all very positive from what i can tell lots of you know my expectations were high and you exceeded them kind of things and uh, uh and loving just the new music so it was all super encouraging we're all really happy about it and then okay let's press on then let's start planning 2024 um, yeah. We wanted to go to California because obviously the weather would be nicer in March, <laughs> but we ended up going to Winnipeg. We're coming to your neighborhood in March, so uh, but that's okay. I've I've arranged for winter to be over on uh, March seventh when we leave. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? Like the weather here has been really nice. Uh, yeah, I know it's totally unpredictable. Yeah, you know? we had one week of like minus. 25 or so but yep. or like a few weeks i guess but like yeah. otherwise like i think today it's only like minus six but yesterday it was like plus two yeah <laughs> so, no. so weird <laughs> minus 50 at one point during that cold snap yeah but there's no snow there now there's no snow yeah like, i was just talking about this today like do i need to get snow tires or <laughs> really well will i be okay with all weathers because it's so weird. Uh, the last time I went into the prairies uh, in March on a tour, uh, we went to Calgary mm -hmm. and it was just 35. And I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not touring in Canada before April ever again. <laughs> Even April, you was like kind of taking your chances. But here I am. Yeah, they say never say never. Yeah. Let, let, let's hope like don't knock on wood let, let's hope that uh uh you know <laughs> huge snowstorm oh, yeah. doesn't happen like days oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, dr I've driven through it all there's okay. no yeah. weather i've not I, i'm dri driving through texas one time and hitting this 
thunderstorm, just, you know, a sunny day and they go, oh, there's something real miserable ahead of us. And you just drive into it and literally lightning striking within 50 feet of the van as we're going 20 miles an hour down the highway because the interstate, because you can't see more than 10 feet in front of you. It's like, oh, my Lord, what have we hit? <laughs> within, within, within 20 minutes, it's all over, you know, that typical fucking prairie shit. Yeah. Holy moly. And, uh, and yeah been been out been across canada and you know probably every month of the year at some point so yeah, yeah but you know i'm i'm 62 now so uh <laughs> i don't know how much patience i'll have with that but we'll see <laughs> all right i've got a last question for you and then uh we'll wrap it up here um so Let's say there's a person who hasn't heard a No Means No track or a Hanson Bros track or whatever uh, before. Is there a track off this album, uh, this Dead Bob album, that you would recommend them? Uh, if that harkens back to No Means No or the Hanson Brothers, is that what you're saying? Uh, a, a track off the Dead Bob album that yeah. that you would uh recommend a person that hasn't heard oh i see yeah, yeah. What, what would gateway drug yeah uh, yeah exactly uh i don't know uh, you know it's so hard to know what people are going to respond to mm -hmm. uh the thing about no means no uh i mean the handsome brothers are pretty straightforward it's yeah. power pop yeah. uh you know that's what it is it is what mm -hmm. it is you pick any one of those songs and that's it right uh no means no wasn't quite that way you know it's like uh and and all different fans respond different people respond to the band in in different ways and i think dead bob is going to be a little bit like that uh i've had you know when people picking their favorite songs it's always a different one uh, like uh, you know maybe uh, i don't know uh, it seems to have fallen down to uh, Just Breathe, the opening track. But White Stone Eyes gets lots of comments. One of you. Uh, one of you might get the most comments. Okay. Which is a bit of an odd song. So when I say, hey, if you're going to check out Dead Bob, listen to this song, that your average person who may not be familiar at all, might go, oh, well, it, it might be a bit of a leap, but I don't know. Maybe not. So that's a real tough question to answer, uh, and because there are, it's nine songs and they're all very different. Yeah. Um, so which which one which one is going to be the one? But yeah. um, and I'm hoping that Dead Bob going forward, the next album is the same. It it the first half of the album is pretty like okay, you know, nothing super unexpected. Different good songs, different and and whatnot. But then it takes a turn. And the latter half of this album is going to be like, oh, uh, not weird, super weird or drastic, but different. And um, and that's what I hope and I what I love to do is not be predictable that, you know, you may pick this one song, but then you're like, what? You know, then I heard this other Dead Bob song and it wasn't like the one I heard before. Uh, but you, you, you have a you have a continuity and tone and and, and, and and the underlying feelings of the music. I think No Means No had kind of a, an underlying sadness to a lot of it, um, but it was also very silly and funny and loud. Um, so your question is a hard one to answer, but my personal favorite, uh, which gets, I think, the most often the most remarks is one of you nice yeah thank you for uh thank you for joining me on suburban home at home this is well, been really fish, fun. I, I, well we'll see you uh march 11th park theater yeah park theater that's gonna be really fun awesome spread the word we were actually riot girls is playing the night before us that was we were trying to get in there on the sunday night oh yeah and riot girls is playing and uh so the promoters uh, were were like, well, let's put the two shows together. Yeah. Uh, but uh, apparently they they wanted a an all girl band or an all female band to oh, okay. uh, to yeah. open for them. I think that's yeah, one of the that things they're sense. doing. 
Oh, that's fine. You know, I said, well, we got Christy. She pretty much makes up for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys have a really good opening bill to uh, oh, yeah? Satanic Rites and Agassiz. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, them and also. Yeah. So Agassiz is, um, you, you know, Propagandi, right? Yeah. Yeah. So their former guitarist, David, uh, was in. Uh, or is now in Agassiz. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward. Uh, I don't know the uh, propaganda guys personally. Okay. Uh, but I know they were always big fans, and uh, uh, at least uh, uh, if I if I I might have met one or more of them, but uh, I don't recall. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I reached out Todd. Um, because we were also reaching out to some, we don't have accommodations in Winnipeg for the show. So yep. reaching out, find a place to stay, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, save money on hotels. And he, 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 uh, he stepped up and said, yeah, well, yeah, you're totally welcome. A couple of us could go stay at his place if we want. So that's awesome. I know those guys were very supportive uh, 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 of No Means No. And they were a great band too. And yes. Of course. Was amazing. So I didn't know that. So uh, great. Now I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's gonna be a really fun bill, and uh, awesome. looking oh, forward. The party yeah. is great too. And yeah. Winnipeg is all. Awesome. I mean, we yeah, first time in Winnipeg was nineteen eighty five, and was it the stretch marks we played with? We stayed on. Oh no, here we go. See, I'm terrible at the, the like at the at the at the archives. There's not a lot still. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> uh yeah spending like three days i remember we were driving there we had like three days off we're driving yeah. i think we played June, driving to winnipeg uh we were there early we were camping we were we were in a ford mercury station wagon with a u-haul trailer on our first trip out to montreal back in 85 we were we thought oh we'll just camp in wood buffalo and uh and so we were up and we stopped and we set up our tent and then and this is like april and it just pissed with rain on us, like just pissed rain all night. And I, my sleeping bag was soaking wet in the morning. And I got up and I was in such a bad mood. <laughs> Fuck this shit. And I, and I, and I, and I walked, I can't, I, you know, I don't know what lake it was. It's probably Wood Buffalo's full of lakes, but some, one of the provincial parks. And, yeah. and I just I walked out in the, into the lake, which was ice fucking cold. And, but I took my shampoo and I just gave myself a, bath in this freezing cold <laughs> and i was in, in a great mood <laughs> yeah nice all good and we we're like fuck this shit let's just go to winnipeg and uh and yeah what is it the stretch marks maybe somebody will somebody can fi fill in the rest of that story I slept on their couch and played a show and then next stop 31 hours to toronto or something yeah <laughs> yeah hopefully i'll uh say say hi to you at the park theater and yeah that'll Please be a really it. yeah be a really fun night awesome we'll see you there then all right see you next month yeah ciao. good one you too